Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have a very special product to review for you. This review was sponsored by Nubia, the manufacturers of the Red Magic 5G gaming phone, which is the best gaming phone on the market in 2020 for a whole lot of reasons that I'm about to tell you about. Right off the bat, as I punch in my password, I show that the box art on the phone is fantastic. We'll put the unboxing at the end of the episode. But if you look in the upper right hand corner of the phone, you'll see a little 144 hertz. We'll take a closer look at this on HDMI capture in a moment. But what that means is that my gaming phone has the same refresh rate as my PC monitors at home, so I can run games on this phone in 144 FPS, which is kind of amazing. And the other feature that I think is really cool is if you can look on this side of it, you'll see you've got your power button and your volume buttons, but you have these little indentations here that are a little bit a little bit difficult to look at, and what they are is touch-sensitive capacitive bumpers. They're not triggers, they're bumpers. So if you were to play something like Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG Mobile, you could aim down sights and shoot while aiming with your thumbs, thus transforming the phone roughly into a controller, which is a godsend of a feature, and that's one I want to take a look at right now in the studio. So personally, I find 144 hertz to be very excessive for daily use. So one of the things I liked about the phone is that I can go to the display settings here and I can actually change my screen refresh rate to 90 or to 60 hertz, just whichever one I need. I'm gonna put it in 144 for today just because we're showing off some fun games, but most of the time I'm probably running 60 because I don't need it except for a few special games which we will cover. One of the cool features about this phone that I've not seen any other device have is this little red button on the side. I'm trying to get my camera to focus on it properly, but it's a switch and when you slide it up, what it does is it boots the phone into the Red Magic gaming mode. And this is where the magic truly, truly happens. So shooters on mobile are inherently difficult to play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boot up Call of Duty Mobile, and I'm gonna show you how these capacitive bumpers can make the game way, way easier. So before I play a game, I wanna set this up properly. What I'm gonna do is go to the game settings for Call of Duty Mobile. I've chosen advanced mode, and I have the hip fire option enabled, but I need to customize my layout and what you'll see is that the right side where I'm supposed to look around has a shoot and an aim down sights and they're kind of in my way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the aim down sights, I'm gonna drag it up to the top, I'm gonna grab the shoot, drag it up to the top. We're actually gonna scale them down quite a lot here because they don't need to be very big. I'll probably take this secondary fire over here the next thing we do, since we're in red magic mode, is we swipe left here, and instead of your standard Android menu, you get the, you got this really cool like red magic one. So you've got game enhancement, aiming assist, fan, for, or you know you can block messages here, which is really cool. So people won't, yeah, I know blocking calls. It's really nice so that people don't bother you while you're gaming. You have uh, super touch, lock touch, docking stations, brightness. Uh, there's a cool WhatsApp integration. So if you want to use that instead of like, say, the game chat or Discord or whatever, you're pretty much good to go. Magic Voice will clean up your audio a little bit. Well, let's go to the juicy one. Let's see the shoulder triggers. Basically, you can turn the touch buttons for left and right on and off and set their sensitivities at the bottom. What you want to do is you want to click and drag the right one right there. I'm actually a little bit off on that and the left one up here like that. I'm still off on the right one. And now I have my bumpers mapped to aim down sights and shoot respectively. So I hit X on that and then I confirm these settings. And then when I leave settings and go play a regular multiplayer match, we're gonna see something really special. You can aim down sights and the right one shoots. So let's put it in action so I can show you what I'm talking about. I am terrible at aiming on mobile. I'll have you guys know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we got to get out of here. Basically, I'm used to playing inverted. I play inverted at home, and mobile has no such options. So for me, that can be exceptionally difficult. Also, playing muted here is a little bit of a challenge. Whoops, there we go. And the fan is kicking on. I can hear it ever so barely. Let me see if I can get some better gameplay with this. I swear the last like recording session I did was so much better. When you're playing a mobile shooter more than most any other kind of mobile game, having the ability to move and aim and shoot fluidly is a massive advantage. And one of the best ways to do that is to not have to be fidgeting with the little, uh, with the click to shoot and stuff. Instead, you can just do all that on the bumpers here. I know I'm playing AI right now, but don't worry, it works very, very well on real people too. <laughs> this is looking a little bit silly, actually. They made these AIs extremely, extremely easy. <laughs> I wish I wish I could play on hard mode, you know? 
but it's something that you can move and shoot and do on uh, the Red Magic 5G that you really can't on any other gaming phone that I'm aware of. Let me knife him. Oh God, knifing's so hard on mobile. <laughs> and while it's helpful in Call of Duty, it's extremely helpful in PUBG. Go, where are some more options? Oh yeah, check these out. Shows you what games you've played the most of today, how your phone health is doing. This is a capture software built in if you're not doing the HDMI thing. Fan, you can turn on or off. You can do intelligent or just maximum rapid here. Uh, again, more recording settings, more networking settings, and just a lot of stuff to really help optimize your gaming situation instead of taking whatever your phone gives you. If you're curious about which mobile games actually make use of the 144Hz screen, there is Dead Trigger 2, which is something of a zombie survival shooter game. This one has uncapped frame rates, so you can play in 144Hz. Unfortunately, this video is just 60, but it does feel very interesting and almost weird in a way to have super high frame rate on a mobile and have it be incredibly smooth. The game that I think does overall the best with this feature is EA's Real Racing 3. There's just something about racing sim games and high frame rates on mobile that just make it look better, kind of like Forza or any of the other neat games. And then finally there's one called Bullet Force 2 which has uncapped frame rates for mobile and it's a Call of Duty-like tactical shooter that I'm kind of terrible at and everybody just murders me because I am I have no idea what I'm doing here. I will say that the 144 hertz screen is an overkill for the vast majority of mobile games. Most of them run at 60 FPS and most of them I don't need uncapped frames on. So the majority of the time I actually lower the phone back down to 60 hertz to save battery life because I just don't need 144. But when I need 144 it's nice to be able to turn it on. On the topic of battery life, I will say that the battery life on this gaming phone is fantastic because it has an absolutely massive battery. Despite being relatively thin and small, it has a 4,500 milliwatt amp battery in it, which is, it's actually 10% smaller than the battery from the previous version, the Red Magic 3, but they made it smaller so that they can, one, cool the phone better, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Two, you can put better cameras and better processors in here, and you can just have a smaller form factor. So they decided to sacrifice 10% battery power to give you a better camera, better processor, and have it be a little bit smaller, which I think is a fair trade-off. And the battery is still just gigantic. It's bigger than any standard Samsung device. Some of you might be wondering, if this phone is so good, then why have I never heard of it before? That's because in the United States, only a couple of companies have a near essential stranglehold on the entire Android market. You've got Samsung, HTC, maybe LG, and then a few people buy Google phones, and then you've got iPhone and that's it. And most of the phones you buy are not even SIM phones, but they're tied directly to your network. Well, that's not the case in China and in other Asian countries. These countries, like Europe, uh, use the simple SIM card pop in and out, so most people would buy a phone and then just get a SIM card with their carrier, which thankfully we're just now getting in the US, and this does work with Verizon, by the way. I've got Verizon on here. And basically what's been going on is that in Asia, there's this sort of crazy wild free-for-all of Android development. They are making high refresh rate screens. They're adding bumpers. The, I mean, this, this phone here has the triple camera thing going on, kind of like the iPhone has. I saw this triple camera thing like five years ago in Singapore on one of my in-laws' like crazy Chinese brand phone that I've never heard of in my life. Because in America, if Samsung decides, well, gamers don't need high frame rates, that's just kind of it. Your choices are much more limited, but in the Asian markets, especially in China with the massive population, if there's enough people that want a high refresh rate phone, somebody somewhere will manufacture them, and that's why we get such honestly very impressive and innovative little devices like the Red Magic 5G here. As you can see on the back of the box, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processor, which is quite strong. That's an eight core processor on your mobile phone which will allow you to run every game that I'm aware of on the highest possible graphics settings. And for me on YouTube, it's a little bit niche. I can like record and edit videos a little bit faster, which is, is in my opinion, that's really cool. And since that processor kind of gets hot sometimes, it has a built-in liquid cooling system and cooling fan to cool it down, which is something that I have not seen on any other phone ever. I'd like to briefly show off that PUBG Mobile today is running, if I can click properly, on HDR resolution. Unfortunately, I can't do Ultra HD because it's not available yet. And Ultra Frame Rate, which is just kind of crazy for mobile. That's above 60 FPS, which you would really not expect. 
the recording devices I have are capped at 60, and they don't really do this game justice. All right, I just greedily gobbled up a loadout drop, and I think I may have found myself in the final fight. Uh, maybe not. Oh, there's people behind me. All right, there we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm not even good at mobile games. It's just very easy when you have nice controls. Some of the other neat options on this phone include a quick 5G on and off toggle switch. I left mine on just in case Verizon wants to give it to me for free. There is a color LED strip on the back you can toggle on and off. That's on the, the physical back of the phone here. And there are a few like a docking station, Super Snap Eye Care Mode. For those of you that are don't like the blue light, it has an automatic yellow light filter. Your mobile network is dual cards. I'm not going to click on that because that'll show you my phone number, which I don't want to be public. It comes with a lot of cool things, including, I believe there are animated dynamic wallpapers, quite a few of them if you want to use these. I think they look cool, but they also eat up the battery a little bit and they look a little crazy while I play with them. And overall, just tons of features, just tons and tons of options and features, which is great. The phone is 5G compatible, so if you have a 5G plan, you can use this 5G phone. I personally only pay for 4G, so when I put my SIM card in, I'm capped at 4G. I did not get the opportunity to test its 5G capabilities without upgrading my phone plan. I'm happy enough with 4, but many of you will be able to use it in 5G because, well, I mean, it is literally the Red Magic 5G is what it's called, and that is better for gaming. Next up, I wanted to talk about the camera on the phone. Like the iPhone and like a lot of the new Android devices, which are also copying the iPhone, we have the triple camera setup. This is a 64 megapixel camera and it's higher quality than the Red Magic 3. However, in my opinion, I find this to be a very sort of standard and average Android camera. I'm gonna go ahead and cut to footage of various things that I filmed with it. And I don't think that it's bad. That's not what I want to say. This doesn't have a garbage camera, but instead it has a camera that's perfectly normal for an Android device. It isn't better or worse than the majority of other Samsung or LG devices, which I guess you could say is a good thing because this is half the price and the camera is just as good. But I think it's sort of a thing where I'm spoiled, where this camera has a huge like Snapdragon processor that can really crank stuff out. It's got 144 hertz, it's got buttons. And I was hoping that the camera would be something amazing as well, but the camera is just kind of normal. Unlike the previous version of this phone, it actually supports HDMI output. That was the biggest flaw that I had with the Red Magic 3 last time and what kept it from being my primary phone. But this one, like most modern Android devices, the USB-C port on the bottom is a dual port that will also output HDMI signal if you have the right adapter, which makes it very easy to stream and capture gameplay directly from your phone. When it comes right down to it, I think that this is an excellent phone for the price. If I'm not mistaken, the base price is $580 and there's a few like little discount programs here and there. But the $580 that you pay for this phone gets you everything that you can get on like a new Samsung phone and then some extra. This is an awesome value phone for gaming. It's very difficult to beat and I have decided to actually make this my primary phone. I've retired my old phone and the Red Magic 5G is now my phone and I'm gonna use this every single day which brings me to the very last flaw and that's that I don't have a case for it yet. It's, it's all made out of glass and it's slippery and slick and it's really thin and I'm afraid I'm gonna sit on it and break it. I, in the 10 years of owning phones, have never broken a phone and that's because I always get the biggest, meanest, honkinest phone case that I possibly can and I treat it like a baby. And I can't do that yet because the phone cases aren't out. Now, as of the time that this video releases, phone cases for this will be out on the market. So that will be a problem that's been alleviated, but it kind of makes me paranoid right now. I'm afraid I'm gonna like jog and it's gonna slip out of my pocket and my favorite phone's gonna shatter, which would kind of suck. So if you're interested in the Red Magic 5G, I should probably hold it like I'm doing a product demo. That would look better, don't you think? There is a link down there in the description so that you can order the device and have it shipped directly to your house. If you're in the US, the way to get this set up on your network is just to order a SIM card and put it in there and it's gonna work fantastic. I hope that you enjoyed this review. I hope that you learned something neat about this phone or just Android development or the, the course of Android development in general outside the United States. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And definitely check this out. If you're in the market for a new phone, if you wanna upgrade, 
This one is, uh, is very, very worth. It is a fantastic value phone and has a lot of features you can't get elsewhere.